Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the OC Varsity Gridiron Show. It is week 10. I'm Steve Fryer here with Carlos Arias and Dan Albano behind the camera making us look good and doing all the cool editing things like that. Production-wise is Jonathan Camus. Guys, here we are. It's the end of the regular season. We've got so many great games coming up. We've got league championships to settle, playoff bursts to figure out, and all kinds of craziness going on. Uh, we got some really good games on, uh, on the schedule. We're going to look at three of them really quickly right here. Uh, we've got on Thursday, we've got Newport Harbor at Los Alamitos. Boy, Los Alamitos lost to Huntington Beach last week, 28-7. Uh, kind of puts a crimp in their playoff plans. Newport Harbor's been playing great. How often do we see Newport Harbor playing its best at the end of the season, guys? You know, to me, it's, all, it's pretty close to a toss-up game. But I'm, uh, gosh, I don't know what to think of this one. Um, so I think I'm just going to feed off what you guys have to say. Dan Albano, what do you think? Who's going to win this game? Los Al. Huntington Beach, I mean, uh, Newport Harbor on Thursday at the Vets. Well, one thing I think is I think I think even if Los Al loses this game, I still think they have a chance to get the at-large berth. So I don't I don't think their playoff, uh, I think they're, they're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. I think, uh, and I think both teams will probably be in the playoffs. I'm going to pick Newport Harbor to win this game. They've had Los Al Milos number for the, fast, for the past five years. The Sailors have won, and uh, Jeff Brinkley's done a great job. The Sailors have really rebounded since they lost 35-0 to Edison. And they've, uh, they're looking like a top-10 team to me. And I think they're going to get this victory um, against Los Al. And, you know, be a pretty scary team. You know, uh, they're just really fundamentally sound. And uh, I think they just, this matchup gives the Griffins a lot of trouble. Carlos, agree or disagree? Agree. And the reason I agree is for many of the same reasons that, that Danny just said. Uh, you know, there's not too much to add there. I think the, they have the momentum. I think Los Al is once again backed into a corner and, you know, they're in a lot of trouble. Now it's up to you to make a decision. I heard you weren't going to, you know, go off of any of our uh, thoughts, so go for it. No, I'm going, it's going to be three for three. I, I like uh, Harbor for the same reason as Dan has, has pointed out. Typical Jeff Brinkley team, huh, guys? Yeah. I mean, very, very well coached, very fundamentally sound. You know, not saying that John Barnes can't coach the gosh darn game, but I really like the sort of momentum and sort of the, the direction things are going, too. So I'm with you on Harbor on that one, too. Okay, huge game in the Trinity League. Two teams ranked in the state top 10. We got Bosco number five in the state, Santa Maria number seven in the state. They play at St. John Bosco on Friday. If you're going to that game, everybody, get there early it's going to be crazy margaret is eight and one overall three and one in the league bosco is nine and oh on the field i think five and four because of some early forfeits and they're four and oh in the league they've beaten everybody so far i'm going to go ahead and just tell you right now i think bosco wins this game but carlos i like i like bosco i like that athleticism you know what i like bosco i like their athleticism but for some reason i think santa margaret is going to pull this out you know uh they've been hit with adversity with transfers and here they are at eight and one and you know they're they're definitely in the mix. Yeah. You know, you, you got to give uh, Santa Margarita a shot. Um, I'm going with the Eagles. Right on. How about you, Danny? What do you think? You know, I'm definitely uh, tempted. I was tempted to pick uh, Santa Margarita because I, I got, they've done a great job overcoming, you know, and dealing with the injury uh, of Johnny Stanton. And, uh, I, I, you know, their defense is stepping up huge. Con O'Brien is really putting some big hits on there in the secondary for Santa Margarita. But I think that uh, this St. John Bosco team really impressed me. I, I saw them, too. And uh, they're really, they played a lot, really clean football game against uh, Modern Day. Very limited turnovers, penalties. They got a great offensive line. They can run the ball. They have athletes. They have a quarterback that's, you know, junior's got a, already got a, a scholarship offer. They're really, they're really good. And I think that they're going to get this game. Though even though Santa Margarita usually plays pretty well up there at Bosco, but I think Bosco's going to get the outright Trinity League title. All right, game of the week. Hey, game of the year even, guys. Um, you know, El Toro, Mission Viejo, number one in the county. Mission Viejo against number two in the county. El Toro, they're both undefeated. In league, they're both undefeated, you know, overall. You know, to me, uh, I still like Mission Viejo in this game, guys. You know, El Toro just looks so good. I mean, they, they've, they've taken on every challenge. They keep getting better. But I think Mission Viejo, I, I like that defensive side of things, offensive versatility. Uh, I think Mission Viejo is going to win this game. Uh, what do you think, Jack Nicholson? <laughs> you know, um, I really, I, I think Mission Viejo has got the better defense, and I usually side heavily toward defense. I think that's, you know, is so important. Uh, but you know, the way the the Mich the, uh, the El Toro offense is, is so plays at such a high uh, rate, and their tempo is so high is what I'm trying to say. They wear down defenses, and I think as good as that front four is for Mission Viejo, I think they're going to eventually get worn down, and I think. So it's gonna, I think it's going to come down to a battle of offenses, and then I think in a battle of offenses, it's hard to, to go against uh, Connor Manning 
And, uh, you know, his cast of receivers, great running back, Jacob Finari. And they kind of have a, a, they're coming off the bye. It's just set up perfectly for them that they've got healthy. They've had time to prepare. And I think, uh, I think, Mich I think El Toro is going to shock the Orange County world on uh, Friday. I hate it when Albano makes me second guess myself. What do you think, Carlos? Well, first of all, I, I grew up uh, down here in this area and I uh, went to Capo. And back in the day, everybody hated El Toro. Everybody hated Mission. They all hated us. It's the best rivalry, you know, out here. And I'm glad to see it being renewed and El Toro back in the South Coast League. Um, the whole community is really excited about it over here. Um, they're going to have a, a packed house, you know, for this game. Um, I'm going with El Toro because they get you into such a frenzy. You can't, there's no way to slow them down, okay? So you get caught up in that, that pace and everything. And, you know, El Toro's for real. I'm going with El Toro. Okay, right -o. A little bit more about this game. So we talked to Coach Robert Frith of El Toro and a couple of the Chargers players. Yeah, uh, people are reminding me every day about you know the rivalry of you know the Mission El Toro ri rivalry of the of the past, and so you know it's been kind of exciting this week just uh, seeing the passion in the people at this school and some of the people that have come out of the woodworks uh, that are either Mission or El Toro, and you know they're saying this is this is a good old rivalry rivalry back from the 80s, and so I wasn't quite aware of, of how serious it was, but you know I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it. So what's the over under on this game? I'm saying 70 points. Is that a little low or a little high? I mean uh, we we like. To score points that's that's all I can say but I know we're very excited for this opportunity for such a great game I mean starting freshman year I remember coach Frith saying um, you know by the time uh, you guys are seniors I want to be in the South Coast League and I want to be uh, one of the lead teams in Orange County and so I think that he's really held us to that standard and um, we've put the work in and worked hard and, and that's where we are now so I really attribute it to him and um, all the work that we've put in, in the offseason and now that uh, now that we're, we are where we are, I feel like this is where we belong. So, Well, offensively, tempo will be key. And um, on defense, we just got to get to the ball as fast as we can, just swarm on them. Okay, thank you, El Toro and Coach Robert Frith. Carlos Arias, you have a look at some of these crazy playoff scenarios that are coming up. Boy, there's so many possibilities out there. There's going to be some coin flips that are going to determine a lot. What are the ones that intrigue you the most? Okay, the craziest one right now is the CV League. Yeah. Laguna Hills beat Dana Hills last week to quench at least a share of the league title. But they still might not get in the playoffs because if Capo Valley beats Aliso, Dana Hills beats San Juan Hills, three-way tie for first, coin flips determined, and then you got to hope for an at-large berth. Uh, another one, the Pacific Coast League. Keep an eye on every single game because there's Irvine, Woodbridge, Beckman, Northwood tied for second place. Um, Beckman plays Corona Del Mar, Irvine plays Woodbridge, Northwood versus Uni. Anything can happen in that league. So every game is important. It's going to be a great finish. Well, it's going to be a great finish and a great week of football here at OCVarsity.com. We've got you covered.